everyone, or good morning or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, thank you for joining today. Uh, a couple of housekeeping points just before I introduce myself and get onto the uh, the webinar itself. Um, the slides for this presentation are available to download in the handout box, which you should be able to find in the control panel. So feel free to download those and uh, have, have a look through them later on. Um, there will be time for question and answers at the end, so please ask any questions in the question box, which again you should be able to find on the control panel, um, and I'll look to get to those at the end of the presentation. So thank you all for joining. Um, my name is Ollie Teal. I am the Growth Director for WSP's Intelligent Transport Services team in the UK. Our team work with our clients across all aspects of transport and mobility, including the digital design of transport infrastructure, um, data and systems engineering, uh, safety and operations, and lighting and energy solutions. Our aim is to make infrastructure more intelligent, to make transport more resilient, and to make people more connected. Um, today, I will be talking about how we are working with our clients to improve the resilience of transport networks through the use of digital connectivity. So I will be taking this topic on from two angles, uh, resilience today and resilience tomorrow using two case studies. Uh, the first is the National Roads Telecommunications Service or NERTS, and the second is the A2M2 Connected Corridor Project. So I'll first give you an overview of each of these projects, followed by the key challenges, innovations, and outcomes from each of them. Both of these are, are UK-based, or in fact, uh, England-based, uh, and I know we have quite a few international attendees on the webinar, which is fantastic. So hopefully these are of interest to you, and I'd be more than happy to discuss uh, more around the different approaches that you may be taking in your respective countries, uh, either at the end of this or, or afterwards, if that's of interest. But in the meantime, let's get straight into it. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the UK setup, um, Highways England are responsible for the strategic uh, road network in England. So this consists of, of over 7,000 kilometres of uh, motorway or major roads, which transports over 4 million people uh, each day and around 1 billion tonnes of freight each year. Now, obviously, we're talking here about um, non-COVID years uh, or non-lockdown years, but it's a fundamental part of the, uh, the England transport network. Um, what you may not appreciate as you're driving along the network is that it's far more than just asphalt with lines painted on it. There are thousands and thousands of sensors collecting data on traffic flow, uh, weather conditions and road incidents, as well as variable message signs providing information to the users of the road, which change based on what's happening across the network. So all of these sensors, things like CCTV cameras and roadside telephones, are connected to seven regional control centers and one national traffic operations center. And the NERTS uh, service, or the National Roads Telecommunications Service, operates and maintains the telecommunications which link all of these assets, providing resilience to the strategic road network uh, to ensure safety, security, and efficiency. So a few statistics, there are around 9,000 signals, around 2,300 cameras, 7,000 telephones, and 8,000 monitoring sites across the, the road network. But NERTS has been around for many years, uh, and to ensure that it's fit for the future and continues to provide ever-improving levels of service, it needs to transform. And the focus of this transformation, which is currently ongoing, is to improve the resilience, security, and safety of the service and of the road network. So some of the key objectives of this transformation program you can see here so enhancing service management to ensure high levels of performance, improving the existing services and upgrading outdated equipment, making use of wireless connectivity where appropriate across the network, and raising security standards. To support this program, WSP and our partners worked with Highways England to develop the vision for the NERTS transformation program and the projects which would sit within it. This included supporting the procurement of the NERTS provider to de deliver these projects, at a technical, commercial, and financial level. Now that these are being delivered, uh, WSP are providing technical assurance on this transformation program, as well as technical and business support on the ongoing service operations. I picked out four of the projects within the program to explain a little more about what's going on. So uh, the first one is the, the SMS, or the Service Management System, which is the overall monitoring and management system for NERTS, collecting, correlating, and displaying alarms for uh, from the network element and recording and managing network incidents. 
and then providing network performance reports. So as part of the transformation, a new SMS is being put in place to improve this service. The Anywhere to Anywhere project, the purpose of that is to allow any Highways England control equipment located at any central office or data center to send and receive IP packets from any Highways England end device, regardless of whether they're in the immediate geographic region, ge geographic region or not, which will allow for future support for disaster recovery and other such scenarios, which helps to improve the resilience of, of the network itself. The wireless project um, aims to bring wireless connectivity to assets in cases where this is the most appropriate solution. So, for example, in the photo you see there, there's unlikely to be a fixed copper cabling across uh, both sides of that carriageway. So if you have a, a sensor or a device on one side of that which requires connectivity, uh, it may be more appropriate to use a solution like microwave, which could be easier and cheaper. Um, and this may be used at the moment across the network in discrete cases. The, the, the aim of this program or this project is to bring that into a managed service so it can be used more consistently and effectively. Uh, and the aim of the CCTV transformation project is then to replace near uh, the near life expired equipment and in doing so migrate to more efficient video codecs so moving from um, where there's analog and bespoke uh, uh, cctv to digital off the shelf while maintaining compatibility and functionality of the existing assets ultimately uh, the transformation program will result in in a more future proof network which is able to flex and expand for the future requirements of highways england and ultimately for the road users um, so you can see from, from the slide in front of you now that uh, some of the specific benefits that are expected from this. But ultimately, this is all about being able to provide the resilience that the strategic road network needs today through the use of data and information which flows through the infrastructure that NERTS is responsible for. So by supporting Highways England to deliver the transformation program, WSP are helping to improve the, the safety, whole life cost and resilience of it uh, for, for years to come. So. That's that's all about sort of resilience today, but in the future, resilience will depend even more on digital connectivity than it does today. Uh, we expect that future transport will be more connected, uh, autonomous, decarbonized, and shared, and will be underpinned by potentially very different business models. To realize this future, reliable digital connectivity is required. So the next case study I'll be talking about focuses on connected transport in particular, and how this might look in the future. So connected vehicle technology um, is set to be a significant change in our use of the road network, particularly through the potential of Cooperative Intelligent Transport Systems or CITS, which allow the sharing of data between road users and traffic managers to provide safer and more resilient transport networks. The A2M2 uh, Connected Corridor Project is a partnership between Highways England, Department for Transport, Transport for London and Kent County Council to demonstrate some of the CITS services which are closest to market and have the potential to provide the largest benefits. This was part of a wider Intercor European project which included similar trials or test fests as they were known in Belgium, France and the Netherlands. And WSP were procured through Highways England's uh, Connected and Autonomous Vehicle Pilot Implementation Programme to support the UK trials. As you can imagine, there are multiple challenges to getting this right. And I'd like to talk here in slightly more general terms about the challenges of implementing connected vehicle services. So you need all of these pieces in place for, for these CITS services to work. Um, the vehicles, the drivers, the system, the data, and the locations. So a quick note on each of them and a couple of the, the challenges. So on vehicles, the technology within vehicles is driven primarily by manufacturer investments. Um, who and the manufacturers have different investment cycles to road operators and to technology companies. So decisions being made by vehicle manufacturers today are going to affect the vehicles that we're driving in the coming years uh, at a different scale to what might, we might see in uh, sort of consumer technology markets, for example. And it's important to recognise that the drivers themselves, user behaviours and experience is, is fundamental to getting CITS services accepted. If people don't trust the data or information that they're seeing they won't use the service and the business models won't work. Uh, on location, just dropping to the bottom left there, depending on the solution that you're looking at or the service you're trying to implement, you may need to use roadside technology like the one in the image there, or, good or rely on good cellular communications, or a hybrid solution as was used in the A2M2 project, 
to provide the connectivity for the services to function. Um, on the data side, users expect a seamless experience. So for example, when you're driving between regions or even countries, um, you expect to receive the same level of service and for that service to continue to work. That requires data sharing agreements and comes with, a, with data storage and analysis challenges. And finally, the systems themselves need to be in place to send the right information to the right users at the right time. And these systems might be procured regionally or centrally and could be owned by different organizations. So standardization and clear roles and responsibilities is important. All of these are challenges which need to be considered for CITS services to work uh, and were managed within the A2M2 Connected Corridor project to deliver a successful trial. So I mentioned some of the CITS services, well I mentioned CITS services in general. Four main ones were trialed on the A2M2 project. Um, some of you on the webinar may be familiar with these, but for those who aren't, I'll briefly explain what they are. Um, the in-vehicle signage is about reproducing roadside uh, messages uh, that you would currently see on, on the uh, variable message signs as you're driving along the network, um, such as uh, speed advice. So for, and that's particularly important where you have a variable speed limit and that could be changing based on traffic flows or on conditions on the network. Uh, lane advice, so if there's an incident on the on the road network and a lane needs to be closed, that could be transmitted into the vehicle as well. Um, Roadworks warning, so providing accurate location-based hazard warning messages for planned works and the speed limits and the starts and ends of those. Uh, green light optimized speed advice, so that's to advise uh, drivers what speeds they could be traveling to avoid having to stop at the red lights, which has uh, potential benefits around uh, air quality and re reducing stop starts and pro vehicle data so the ability for um, data to be sent from the vehicles back to road operators to then use to uh, manage the network more effectively and there thereby improve resilience so as with any trials there were learnings and suggested next steps um, there's a, a full evaluation report which is openly available on the uh, the Intercore website. I've got the link there as well, so feel free to have a look at that. I've extracted a few of the key lessons here, and there is also a UK evaluation report by WSP which will be published published in due course. Um, the A2M2 Connected Corridor project and the test fests across the Intercore member states have successfully demonstrated uh, real-time connected vehicle services on live urban and interurban roads. Um, using existing live traffic data sources, the project provided drivers with in-vehicle services that they, the users both liked and indicated they would use in the future. Uh, the UK's Test Fest event involved 33 participants from six countries testing their connected vehicles on UK roads and demonstrating that interoperability I mentioned earlier. The project demonstrated, first of all, that CITS technology works and that through the implementation of common specifications, interoperability of services can be achieved across regional and international borders. There is of course room for improvement in things like understanding how effective these services are in various scenarios and the benefits that they can bring at a larger scale. Um, data requirements are important. So for example, uh, on the Glosa um, service could provide, could provide real world benefits, but it is challenging to implement when it's used in conjunction with uh, highly existing highly optimized and adaptive traffic signals. So understanding what requirements there are to actually successfully implement those services is really important. Um, as is user acceptance and human factors, which I've mentioned already, but the in-vehicle information display or human machine interface has a significant impact on the user acceptance of services. It also has a potential to cause distraction. So through the use of CITS services, users in the trials felt they had an increased situational awareness and better information on current road conditions, which increased a feeling of comfort. This should, in theory, see a reduction in stress and possibly road rage, and therefore increase in the safety of road users in general. However, uh, there are also some suggested uh, improvements that could be made. So to improve the value of the service, for example, it was suggested to make the human machine interface more customizable and integrate it into the existing sat navs to meet uh, the needs of different profile of road users and journey purposes. In terms of next steps, um, more evidence on benefits is needed, particularly at a larger scale. Um, so further testing is recommended to, to estimate user perceptions about the accuracy, timeliness and trustworthiness of the services. Um, in collaboration with vehicle manufacturers is really important. Um, as I mentioned, they're driving a lot of the 
the changes around the use of technology within vehicles themselves. Um, so it's really important that we recognize that and collaborate with, with those vehicle manufacturers and, and the technology providers to those manufacturers. Finally, a, a wide scale rollout of connected vehicle services in the short term is achievable. Uh, further large scale testing in a more, uh, more controlled environment is recommended to, to collect in-depth feedback about the quality of the services in specific scenarios, for example, in congestion or when there's accidents ahead. So due to the nature of some of the testing, uh, it was difficult to predict when and how often scenarios like um, you know, speed signage requiring a behavioral response would be experienced by the participants. So a focus on CITS services and data in a wider rollout would help to move this whole thing forward. But in, in summary of this one, um, this, this contract or this project has helped to promote the UK as a market leader in connected and autonomous vehicles and CITS technology and has laid the foundations for future uh, connected vehicle services deployments. And as part of the wider European Intercor project, the UK deployed the system in line with the shared specifications, which, was, which meant we were able to demonstrate interoperability with corridors in Belgium, France and the Netherlands. Um, just a note on, on sustainable development goals, UN sustainable development goals and sort of fitting into the, the bigger picture. The project I mentioned primarily relate to goals 8, uh, 9 and 11 of the UN sustainable development goals. So around improving economic growth, uh, industry innovation and potentially to create more sustainable cities. It's just important to, uh, to recognise how this fits into to the wider goals of, uh, of things like the UN. So in summary and, and sort of as a key takeaway, I mean, today we are supporting Highways England to keep the strategic road network operational and improving the resilience of, of that network. Um, tomorrow may look very different, but um, we are working with our clients now and uh, look forward to helping to create that future. So that is everything from me. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions anybody has. So um, look forward to speaking to you. Thank you. In fact, I'll turn my webcam on now as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Oli. Thank you for a great presentation. So before moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download the PDF version of the presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. So we move to the first question. Uh, what impact do you think that COVID-19 has on digital connectivity in the long term for resilience in planning our cities? Well, COVID-19 has is, is clearly had a, a massive impact on, on how people have traveled over the past year. I mean, it just it's disrupted long-term uh, long patterns like increases in, in shared and public transport use, uh, peaks and troughs of travel, et cetera, for commuting with so many people working from home. Um, a couple of impacts I see uh, kind of going forward. I think the, the first is the importance of data. I mean, it was quite clear that at the start of the, of the pandemic and the lockdowns, uh, the likes of the Department for Transport and the Transport Technology Forum and local governments have been working very closely there, or more closely than ever with the private sector to share data on travel patterns and behaviours uh, and using that as a proxy for things like understanding the impact of lockdowns on freight movement and whether people are switching more to walking and cycling and to private car use. But I think that's, well, that's shown us what we can achieve both as a just in general as a society and as an industry in using this data that we now have available from the myriad of sensors that we have on our network or data that people own from mobile phone data or vehicle data um, and that'll help hopefully help us to improve the way we manage transport networks going forward uh, and the second one i think is the importance of connectivity generally um, in that we've all had to switch to home working um, personally I've, I've only been to the office twice in the last year which is just a bit insane to think about um, and I rely entirely on, on connections to, to the internet to our VPN so the importance of that has been highlighted more than ever so I think um, fundamentally I mean it, it's just shined a light on how important digital connectivity is is to us for for our own resilience thank you uh, next question how do you see data from vehicles and mobile phones being used to provide resilience in the future yeah so um there's a lot of data sharing going on uh now um and let's say more than ever and based on sort of latest european uh, vehicle legislation my understanding is that safety critical data from vehicles is now uh it has to be shared uh certainly going forward for the latest vehicles 
And uh, similarly, mobile network operators understand the potential of their data and are collaborating with collaborating with transport authorities to, to make use of this. But in terms of uh, how it could be used in the future and potential value, um, it can provide better inf information on the situation on, on uh, transport networks. Uh, crowdsource data can help us get a much more accurate picture of um, what's happening on the road and then help to make more informed decisions, all of which helps to increase resilience. Uh, I think the key is recognizing that potential of that data, understanding what information can be used in which case and for which purpose, which is where I think a focus on services and the outcomes you're trying to achieve from services and therefore the data that you require to make those outcomes a reality uh, is important. Fantastic, thank you. Um, we don't have additional questions at the moment, um, so looks like we're at the end of our webinar session. Uh, please feel free to follow up uh, directly with Olive via the, the contact details uh, shown on the screen. And uh, I would like to thank all attendees for joining today and a big thank you, uh, Olive, for a great uh, presentation. Oh, well, thank you for, for inviting me and, and thank you everyone for joining. And as a as you say, uh, please feel free to follow up with me. I've got my contact details on there if, uh, if there's anything you want to uh, ask me or uh, get in touch about. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thanks. wonderful day. Thank you.